Bids are in. The gavel is dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, we are finally hammered. That's right. This is Wine Bids podcast dedicated to all things wine value, wine retail, wine auctions, and just wine. My name is Jeff Gern. I'm with the Wine Bid marketing team. With me, as always, is uh, Paul Walker. Paul is our resident wine expert. You can tell because he's wearing his wine expert uniform. This is what uh, <laughs> this is what the most knowledgeable people in the wine industry, industry wear. They wear blue Henleys, and that's what Paul's wearing today. I had no idea. I mean, they every gave time you say it, don't forget. I have exam, to also. Right? I also have to say that Jeff is our resident wine investment. <laughs> he, he he loves that as equally as I love the title of wine expert, which is a complete misnomer. It's totally not true. And I would have made a ton of money if Paul doesn't hadn't constantly talked me out of buying things that appreciate tremendously in value. Well, if you would, if you just kept, if you held on to them and stopped drinking all of them, then you know they'd be worth something. Oh, is that how I make money in wine? <laughs> I have to not drink it? Exactly. What do I do instead? <laughs> it's just look at it. I look at it. Well, this, of course, is our episode dedicated to everything coming into auction this week outside of Bordeaux, in France, but outside of Bordeaux and Burgundy. There's a lot of qualifiers on what we'll be covering, obviously. And I want to delve right into it. I want to start with the A's. And A is today is uh, for Alsace. I know what and, you're going to say. I know what you're going to bring. You're going to go from A to Z. Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, the from only thing Alsace gonna... to Zin Humbrecht. <laughs> All, all the only is, is, is like a ton of Zin Umbrecht coming into auction <laughs> this week. They're but actually going to go into that. There has been more consistently than in the recent in recent months than there has in past years, which is funny because I I you know been following this forever and you know why? No, it's a finally hammered effect is <laughs> because we have been talking about how much. We well, you don't. I don't think you like Alsatian wine, but I love Alsatian wine. Oh, please, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I was drinking Zinnamrek before you knew what <laughs> Zinnamrek was. So. Before I was born, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna make a joke about that 1934 that we talked about in the other podcast. I'm like, it's a look, it's a birth year for you, Paul. <laughs> I'm looking pretty good for 34. That's, <laughs> That's true. Right. That's what happens when you embalm yourself from the inside out. <laughs> It's all that wine Man, you drink. Alsatian, pres- Alsatian preservative. So here's actually some interesting stuff. I'm not going to go too much into the Zinnenberg other than to mention that it's there. And I think it's absolutely stunningly delicious. And I don't know that I've ever tasted a bottle of Zinnenberg and be like, I haven't even been like, I've never been this is bad. I've never been like, this is okay. Like, I feel like everything I've ever tasted from them, like, this is stunningly delicious. I really should try and buy stock in Zen Humbrick. Too late. There's some really interesting stuff from Alsace. There's uh, these uh, 2011 uh, Marcel Beast Dice Muscat uh, de Alsace Bergheim. We have 10 bottles at $25 a bottle. I feel like we just haven't seen a ton of Muscat coming from Alsace recently but and so there's that and then there's a 2019 Wienbach actually should be Weinbach uh, mm-hmm. uh, Muscat as well we've got six bottles of those at thirty dollars so I mean tremendous value I think in in that and I think that could be really delicious stuff you know yeah. candidly I haven't had a lot of you know Alsatian Muscat but I'm sure you drink it all the time <laughs> I actually have had I've had a couple of Muscats recently but not the dry vine box stuff in a long time. I saw there's sil- some Sylvaner also. Yes. Uh, which is even cheaper, 20 bucks for the Sylvaner 19. I mean, I didn't mention that because I'm bidding on it. <laughs> oh, you are. Yeah, that's funny. So there you go. Some great deals. Well, yeah, you'll probably just, be able to secure it. Let I would me just imagine. go raise my reserve right now. But I think I'll probably end up. I mean, I've got the I've got the Muscat. Actually, I can't. I, I may have bid on some of the Muscat as well. But I, I don't know. I just thought it looked. I love these really interesting varietals. I mean, look, I, I was right, also just known for. Riesling, it's known for... Um, I have to correct you on that. Varietal is an adjective. Variety is the noun. Okay, whatever. Okay, thank you, mom. My mother's an English teacher, so <laughs> I'm used to this. And you know, prepositions are not things and sentences with. So anyway, but I feel like it's, you know, everyone thinks of Alsace's Gewürztraminer and, and and Riesling, but they make phenomenal varietals outside of that, right? Like um, your Pinot Gris, Brighties, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc. Here's the thing. Language is fluid. And it's changed. Okay. So <laughs> get with the times. Like Shakespeare, I invent new ways of using words. Incorrectly. I'm yes, very, it's very Shakespearean of me. 
is probably what you're thinking. <laughs> anyway, but speaking of Gewurz Schreminer, we've got the 07 uh, Hugel uh, Gewurz Schreminer uh, Vindage Tardiv for $45 as well. I think that one's probably a out- pretty outstanding deal too. They make some great wine over there at Hugel. Hugel? 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 Hugel. I'm always like torn on whether to use the German pronunciation or my incorrect French French pronunciation on the Alsatian <laughs> wines. Let's travel to Champagne, where we've got some interesting stuff this week. 04 Salon, Le Mesnil, Blanc de Blancs for paltry 985. What a steal for a bottle yeah, of Salon. I saw that too. Fantastic stuff. One of those... Uh, champagnes that you know just went through the roof a few years ago and kept doubling in price every year so yeah it's uh it's so pretty wild what you're saying is it's a lock to double in price every year <laughs> you're the <laughs> investment <I> expert <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm just, you tell me you, you tell me it. jeff you said it i'm just <laughs> using your words um, <laughs> um 1995 uh bill cart summon uh, Blanc de Blancs. I thought this one was cool. It actually already has two bids, taking it from 215 to 235. This one yeah, I thought those, would be really those, interesting. One. Like single vin or single vintage or whatever vintage, you know, specific Billicart wines. You don't see them all the time. They're actually not that easy to find retail either because you can always find the you know the Brut Rosé and usually the less expensive uh, you know non rosé wine i forget what it's i think it's just brute billicard salmon brute but anyway the single vintage wines are a little trickier and there are two there's two lots of the 95 well no one's did you mention did you say the the magnum the nicola i was actually going to mention the man, magnum of nicola next which yeah. i thought was really cool at 500 right it's kind of and... funny because the 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 95 blanc de blanc is 235 i mean i guess that's interesting why not go with a Nicola? At, at, yeah, at, exactly. The Cuvée Nicola 500. At, at 500. But, well, you're right. There's two bids already. So, I mean, huh. That's a tricky one. But the Rare I stuff. Mean, but, yeah, the, the, those are great wines. They're really, really good. What was interesting is if you look at the scores on Cellar Tracker, the actual, the regular Blanc Which I don't. I ignore um, I know. You prefer scores. Wine Spectator. And uh, Wilfred Wong. But the one that, <laughs> interestingly enough, the, the regular vintage 1995 outperforms the Cuvée Nicola. I don't know why. That doesn't but, make any sense. But the tasting notes for both look pretty darn good. So, yeah, and those I guess are, those are good. I guess the other thing is it seems like the Cuvée Nicola, well, it's not a Blanc de Blanc. I guess it's it's like 60% Pinot Noir. And I, you know me, I love my Blanc de Noir. You hate Blanc de Noir. I love it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I don't know. I why love you that you make you make up these ridic- ridiculous hyperbole every time <laughs> I you talk about what I like and don't like. It's well, it's what you. I'm just saying what you said. I'm well, you maybe if you came you up said. here for you know company events, you'd be, get to taste a bunch of different wines. <laughs> but, you know, you're off traipsing around in Hawaii doing God knows what. For people uh, who don't no, let's know, see. I had a pre-scheduled. Yeah, vacation, yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure Paul made sure to schedule the company event. At the same time as my pre-scheduled vacation, which I had already like booked and could not get out there of. There we go. 1990 Piper Hedzik Brut Rare, which I'm a big fan of the Piper Hedzik Brut Rare. I mean, I think it's delicious. I think, I mean, it's, it's not cheap, but I also think it's not crazy for what you get. Like, I think it's it's really good stuff for what you get. 295, I didn't think was insane for a bottle of Brut Rare with, with that age on it. Yeah, that stuff's expensive. I I didn't know it was it was that much actually. It's a lot, but no, '90s a great vintage. And do they release this stuff like years later? Like, is it disgorged like a long time after the vintage uh, or something? I don't. It's a really good question. I don't necessarily believe so. I because this is a different cuvee, right? This is the cuvee reserve. There's also the the reg- well the regular rare which I think is a different wine. I think the reg- I, I could be wrong and I'd be curious to know, but for some reason, I feel like the regular rare is newer. It's a yeah, new brand it's like, thing. Or it's, oh, I see what you're saying. It's got a, they, there's they an, gave it, it that really fancy bottle. Yeah, like there's the, an 88 in auction. It's not new this week, but there's 88 Heidzik rare, which is actually quite a bit more. It's 425, but the Cuvée Reserve implies 
like a different cuvee of the rare, but maybe, I don't know. I've got to look that up, but it's good stuff. Oh, I get, maybe I'm wrong here because that 88, it's got that crazy, you know, that crazy design and the 88 actually looks, it looks really newer. good for <laughs> the bottle looks newer than the 90. <laughs> it looks way newer. Yeah. So I wonder if, if it was, yeah, I'd have to look at it. I'm sure on the website, they probably tell you like disgorgement dates and stuff like that. It'd be kind of interesting to find out. Yeah, but it's interesting, too, because this I think this wine has come up in price considerably in the last few. I mean, everything has in champagne for that matter. But some of the larger, you know, houses, the bigger producers are, are, I mean, shoot, like 88 Cristal and some of these other, you know, like Tete de Cuvées can't be much more or less than 425, I would imagine. So it just seems like a lot, but. That's uh, what happens. What happens with this? Let me tell you about some of uh, my picks. I only have a few, then we can move on. Yeah. There's, uh, I always mention Guillaume Salas, uh, lesser known than, than Jacques Salas, but preferable to, to some di- slightly different style wine. There's a bottle of that in this week at 405. Uh, there's 09 Hugues Godmet, uh, Les Alouettes, Saint Bet, three of those at 90. That stuck out. There's a Pierre Peters Grand Cru Heritage Blanc de Blanc, which is incredibly expensive. And it's actually sold for this before, 1150. And it's, I believe, it's a blend of a whole bunch of vintages. I, I it's another thing I meant to look up before. Um, we discussed it, but naturally, I didn't have time. But anyway, it's I believe this is it's possibly the most expensive wine that Pierre Peters produces. Isn't and it, what do they call that in, in champagne? Isn't the technical term is jungle juice? <laughs> they just mix together everything they have left over and sell for a lot more. <laughs> well, it has it. And I, it's one of the other things where I was going to look and see, because the label has a list of vintages running all the way from 2010 back to 1921, which would imply it was a cuvee of all those declared vintages, but that's probably why it's so darn expensive. So anyway, interesting. I've never tasted this stuff. I I knew like Pierre Peters is great. I love it. And I, the, the Chetillon is amazing and the reserve is great. And, but I did not know about this heritage bottling. So that's pretty amazing. Did you sure, see this? Fantastic. Did you see this uh, non-vintage Gosset 12 Oms? No. Huh. Which is nice because I know a lot of people, you know, are wild about 10 or 11 Oms. This really takes it to the next level with a 12th one. 12 um, years. Well, what's that refer to? 12 years of aging? Oh, 12. What's it say? It says 12 years in the caves on minima. So probably like minimum 12 years aged before they disgorge it, I would imagine. I thought, this st- I thought this stuff actually looked pretty looked pretty interesting at eighty five dollars. No, no bids yet, but the tasting notes treated quite kindly. And then the other one I saw was the uh, non vintage Stefan Coquette Champagne Brut Carte d'Or. Hmm. Is this something you've tried? Coquette or Coquette? That's what Stephane I said. Stefan Coquette. No, That's what I, I said. Your your hearing is off. <laughs> You missed a vowel there. I don't know this wine. No. Uh-uh. This this one also is raved about by a lot of folks. So I thought that one was sort of interesting, potentially a good one to try. Certainly the price is right. It's not, you know. Yeah, not bad. Crazy. Not bad. What else you got? I think that was it. That was my, I had just those few, what, how many I have? Yeah, just four this week. All right. Let's go to uh, the Languedoc Roussillon. Where there's a 05 Chateau de la Negli, uh, Negli, 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 Co- yeah, Negli, Cote de la Clap yeah. to Ciel. The Magnum, you're talking about the that? The Magnum for yeah. 170. I thought yeah. that was interesting to see some Syrah from down in the Languedoc. Um, Very cool. In, yeah, in no, Magnum format. serious stuff and has a following, gets big scores, you know, all that, but. Good. Yeah, that's that's a that's a nice bottle of wine. I'm sure it's drinking fantastically now too. Especially out of a mag. Yeah. We've got also for 170 at 14 uh Domaine de Die Dagonel uh Sancerre. We are which, quickly moving over to the Loire. Uh, yes. I yeah. <laughs> that, that was all I had in the Languedoc. I see. I, I wanted to move to the Loire. And uh this stuff I here's quite good. Oh yeah, uh, Dagonel's great. The sun's uh Didier Sun's took over 
after he passed away and the wines are still fantastic. Mont Damnay, serious source. I, it's funny because I picked out the Cotat Mont Damnay. I, I love that stuff. It's just awesome. And there's some Cotat in which I should specify Pascal Cotat Mont Damnay. I had that picked out as well, the 2019, for which has two yeah, bids. Yeah, the 18's at, at 55, the 19's got a bid, or it did. Two, two bids. A couple bids, yeah, 57 now. 57 now. Those yeah. wines are just phenomenal. They're really, really good. But the 14 Dagano Montagne should be amazing, too. Between the two of those, which one would you go for? Well, I mean, it's like, that's a whole nother price bracket right i mean it's like oh. almost twi- triple the price now it's more than that it's more than triple more than triple the price yeah yeah is it worth it is it is it three times as good i hate these questions they're so annoying because i have a friend that asks me this all the time and <laughs> he's a he's a lawyer and i'm like dude i don't know buy it yourself drink them next to each other and then you tell me and then you can ask me it's almost like i asked you these things specifically because it annoys you yeah, well, you're 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 very good at that. Very good at annoying. Me. Good at, I practice. I practice need a glass perfect. of this Mont now. It just it makes me thirsty. <laughs> to get it makes me thirsty just looking at the bottle. Actually, it's really it's such good stuff. You um, see, that also there's some Nicolas Jolie wine. There's the Coulé de Serran 2010 for 90 bucks. I didn't know that stuff got that expensive these days, but. Well, what, 13 years old, great vintage, great wine, biodynamic, pioneer, awesome stuff. So anyway, those are my Loire picks. I don't think I had any more. Uh, the only two, thing, the only other oh, two wait. things. Two no, yeah, there was a Chateau de Tracy Puy Fumé, Haute Densité, High Density Puy Fumé. I like that term. 14, 10 of those at 50 bucks. I I don't know this producer, but I'll bet it's excellent. Uh, well, so I was looking at the 2010 uh, Nicolas Jolly. Uh, yeah, the Coulé Sauron. Yes, the for 90, uh, some interesting Chenin Blanc there. And then, yeah, no, those Jolly wines, the Coulé Sauron wines are, are great. I think there's some younger stuff in too. At $90. And then the 09 Bernard Baudry Chenon, Le Croix Boussois, Boussais, Le Croix Boussais. Um, yeah, Croix Boussais. Yeah, yeah. That stuff looked pretty good. That's kind of good. Baudry Chenon's good. That, that's yeah. expensive. That's a lot. But hey, again, great vintage. You know, it's got some time on it. It's got 14 years of 14 age. years. Probably, um, probably phenomenal right now. If you're into Chenon. <laughs> if you're into Chenon. Let's head over to uh, the Rhone, where we have yet another bottle this week of uh, Jean-Louis Schaub, 08 Hermitage Blanc yes. this week. For 250 smackaroos, you can get into a bottle of Jean-Louis Schaub Hermitage Blanc, which if uh, the last, what, two months have ta- taught us anything, it's that those Jean-Louis Schaub bottles move like crazy. Like they will get snatched. Yeah, the, wh- the white... It's another another example where the white can be more than the red, depending on the vintage. <laughs> but the white Chauve Hermitage Blanc is phenomenal. It's just so, so good. So I'm sure those will get grabbed up. <laughs> those will get, yeah, uh, for sure. Well, the other thing I was looking at, more affordable, if you want some Jean-Louis Chauve, they've got some 11 Saint-Joseph for 75 bucks. We've got three of those. I am a, I know you don't like Saint-Joseph. I think it's fantastic. I don't. Uh, I think it's delicious. That's what I heard. Why don't I like San Jose? That doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Because you're strange. Uh, You're, you know, (laughs) I feel like you're like my four year old where like she uses the phrase, I don't like that to, you know, I don't like it or I hate it to mean like I'm not into it. It sounds like you. That's she gets it from you because you say, I hate this. I don't like that. Are you you calling me this? You don't like that. You call me fickle. Are you calling me spoofinated or spoofilated? Spoofilated. Yeah, you only like spoofilated wines. I'm su- I'm surprised you're talking all like you. Your you new name. Toity, you're, you're like, oh, I like Jean Louis Shaw. Just Saint so you know, Shaw. your new nickname is the spoofinator. Sure nonsense. You like you're, Chateauneuf. If you like overripe 07 Chateauneuf. You don't like <laughs> you don't like Shaw. Jean- don't like well, Shaw. yeah, actually, when was the last time you had Shaw Jean San Joseph? I haven't had it for a while. I, I, Full disclosure. I, I only use it for my sangria. <laughs> um uh 2016 i'm just joking i wouldn't i would use the i would use the hermitage for the sangria <laughs> just adds a nice kick the uh 2016 rene rostange uh rostang coat mm-hmm. roti uh on um, podium this one for 50 dollars 
thought that was, I don't know, that seemed like a decent deal to me. And then this uh, Augusta Clap Corna. Yeah, Clap Corna is great, has a serious following. It's always quite good, but it four lots. On, oh, really? Yeah. And at one night, I mean, they're 195. I mean, what are your thoughts on 195 for that 99 uh, Clap Cordon? Well, it's a lot cheaper than 90, which is 585. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, 90 is a phenomenal vintage, but wow, that's, uh, yeah, pushing 600 bucks for Cornon. I mean, that's, yeah, serious wine. I think, you know, Alamond is in the same, same realm, I, although... I would imagine earlier 90s Alamond is probably more expensive than like the 90. I don't know. 99, a little bit polarizing. I think 98 and 2000 had some more success. Personally, I don't know. I think I would probably opt for the uh, for the 05 a little, little less, 195. No, I guess it's the same, right? It's the 99. Well, I don't yeah, know. I'd, so I probably not go take the 05 over the. I, I just I I like 05 better than 99 historically. I've had no, a lot. You don't of like odd runs. numbers. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of 99 roads, and I think 98 and 2000 are are, are better vintages. Of course, now they're they're going to be more expensive, but I'd buy the 05. Or then there's Jeff's vintage, the 07, the super hot California vintage. <laughs> what do you call it? I was going to pick out some Jeff's vintage. I was going to pick out some 07 Chateaus for you this week, but I don't know if we have. Oh no, there's a. Are there any new ones? I don't know if there are any new this week. The other thing I was going to say is there's um, famous, you know, Reyes related Chateau de Tour Vaqueras Reserve for 190, and it's just it just blows my mind that those wines are so expensive. But that's what happens. It's on the Reyes. Real well, trip. So, did you see uh, this uh, 2014 Georges Verde Condru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. 85. See that. We have two of those. I thought that looked pretty cool. I'm yeah, Condru, Condru. Yeah, because we've 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 mentioned those in the past before, and like I think a few months ago we were trying to figure out what was the difference between the there were like different cuvées, and there was a mag of one, and like. The other one was much more expensive. I, I, yeah. I don't know what, what the, the Chai don't, was it? Yeah. The, Cause this week there's Viognier, which is just straight, you know, just variety wine. It looks like the, well, I don't want to get in trouble, but Le Pied de Samso. I, it, to me, those $20 Viogniers, it's probably, you know, probably f- not from Condrio specifically, but those, those are probably pretty good. 20 bucks for Vernet. I mean, Vernet is a great producer. But yeah, then the Congio Le Chai de l'Enfer, 14 at 85. That's probably really, really good. Probably, that's probably, probably fantastic, Congio, yeah. actually. I'm sure it's Just awesome. Outstanding. 01 Xavier Vignon Chateauneuf de Pape Couvin Angers for 70 bucks. This stuff, recent tasting notes are treating it well. Seemed like a decent price with some age on, although, I don't know, I don't like to let cdp's age for too long you know but that's just me and then uh 20 yeah there's a 72 did you see the 72 and that's i did that's, I, and it just it worries that looks me like a I re-release see. i mean the label's perfect it's perfect <laughs> it's so weird i'd love to see a back label for this thing because well, i'll look at the I mean, look at the, the vintage label it's like brand new so I'll, this is probably a late release from the winery or in, importer special like or chateau something. or yeah, um, it's because it's getting level, bit up too. Did you see that? It started it's got four 40. bids on it. Yeah, yeah, it's up to fifty one. So that's, and that's an interesting vintage in France. It's my my brother's birth year actually, so it's kind of hard to find. <laughs> Let's just say excellent wine from seventy two in France. And so I'm wondering. That's that's kind of cool to keep you in mind. Uh, yeah, fifty bucks is not crazy. Well, actually. it's I, I would imagine it'll it'll get bit up. You know, probably you know, over a hundred. Maybe I mean yeah we got a few days left in in, in the auction so uh, I yeah I think, it's definitely happened before <laughs> I think I think that one will make its way up I was also looking at the 2015 Domaine Girard Pape Grenache de Pierre Pierre and then the, this uh, we had a 2012 Chenet Bleu Eloise. oh yeah that's another the, one of my picks the Chen Bleu I met the owner of this winery. A few years ago, it was kind of cool. Actually, we had this crazy lunch at up at Auberge, and she brought 
Of course, I don't remember what the vintage was, but and there's multiple designations too. There's Eloise, and then there's there are other wines as well. And it was it's really really good, and it's not it's pretty rare. You don't see it that often, so yeah, that's it, cool stuff. Cool Southern Run blend, sixty five bucks seems reasonable to me for yeah. you know something with that rarity. And and uh, I'll I mean I'll bet it's drinking fantastically now with you know eleven years of age. Yeah, um, no, I bet it's really, really good. Serious score from Jancis Robinson. The the write up on it is really impressive. So, I bet it's really good. And then the only other thing I had from the Rhone was this Chambryon Manin Cote Roti Cote Brunet, which uh, we've got five of them, and uh, they already have bids. They went from sixty to sixty one. Chambryon. I can't Chambéron. find it, but cool. 2017 Chambéron Cote Roti. And then uh, let's travel a little bit. Let's go to Jura. I didn't even look at Jura wines this week. because There were some fun ones uh, last it, week. but Is this Jura, the Domaine, Didier, uh, Degenau? Uh, no, we already covered Ron that. That's, that's from oh, Laura. We already covered it. Wait, no, this is... Wait, no, I'm... Uh, then I'm... What? Okay, I must be looking at the wrong... Oh, the, you're talking about the Jardin de Babylon. Yeah, yeah. that's that's from this wine, I believe... Jurac? I don't know if it is from Jura, but Jura it's, Con, a, Jura Con. it's late West harvest. West. Yeah, Jura Son, which is not Jura. <laughs> That's what means. I meant. I meant Jura Son. Yeah, well, Jura I said Son. Jura, but I meant Jura Son. It's great. I've, if you've, I don't know if you've had this wine before, but it's I'm really not. delicious. It's really, really good. It's not as rare as the what's it? The flowers of autumn, the fleur d'automne. It's like the super rare Dagano sweet wine, but the Jura Son, yeah, it's excellent. And I think there may. be, you may want to look at this. I may go back in the warehouse and look at this bottle because I think there's odd sizes of bottles. This might actually be a 500 milliliter and it's not described as such, but I'll, I'll go confirm that after we're done. And there's um, one of your buddies, Poufinet Arbois Trousseau. Did you see that? That's, I saw that. Yeah I, yeah. I feel like we mentioned that like every week we're like, we never see this stuff. And then every week, like a bunch comes in, like more comes in every week. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, did you see there's, there's Overnois this week, which is a huge deal in Jura. Always just like crazily sought after, super expensive now. It's 480, you know, it's pushing 500 bucks. Everybody goes bonkers for, for Overnois. But anyway, that's so it. Let's, week. let's talk a little bit about this one I thought was interesting. There is a wine from um, Southwest France from Madron, an 08 Domaine uh, Bertolomeu Madrian, uh, Madron uh, Vitis MCM, which is for $300. Wow. Uh, is some particularly high end Tanat. And I don't know. I feel like I don't see a ton of to not. <laughs> well, this, yeah. My high is end like to not, where I it's guess. grown. I think that's where it's like most successful, at least outside of France, you know, because you don't South see America. a lot of these wines in the US, but that's crazily high. Yeah. So I thought it was wow. Yeah, particularly expensive. Vitas uh, MCM. Uh, I got to look that up because that's got to be some kind of you know Bertomieu Vitas MCM. What is that all about? Yeah, interesting. And if I'm not mistaken, Tanat is one of the more tannic grape varietals out there. One of the top tannic grape varietals, is it not? Yeah, very. So this is probably. Quite young, <laughs> yeah, even right. at uh, fifteen years of age. <laughs> yeah, what most likely, trip. but yeah, it just stood out to me because you, you know, it was just kind of a not something I had recognized from an interesting region, sort of an off grape varietal, and three hundred dollars seemed. Yeah, that's really interesting. Hmm. That's a rare find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one, uh, you know, could be a cool one for uh, a wine geek. You know, if yeah, looking definitely. for a three hundred dollar gift <laughs> that somebody's <laughs> never tried super high-end luxury to not <laughs> you know i i can't say that i've seen a, a lot of that out out there you know you go to your wine list ah sir would you like our vintage uh o older vintage fine to not <laughs> list um anything else from outside of uh I, in france but outside of burgundy bordeaux that uh, you wanted to mention i think that was everything. There were a couple nice bottles of Beaujolais. There's some Foyard Morgan Cote de Pie yeah. Magnums. There's 12 yeah. and 19. Yeah. 12 is 
a lot more. It's a 220 for the 12 mag and the 19 mag is 120. And then there's some 16, two bottles of 16 uh, Metras Fleury that I just wanted to point out. And I think that's, yeah, that's it for, for France for me this week. Well, with uh, Finally Hammered, this has been a lovely trip around France, Bordeaux <laughs> and Burgundy notwithstanding. And uh, this has been uh, Jeff McGurd and Paul Walker wishing you happy bidding and cheers. Cheers. Cheers.